we got a 997 2009 model really nice clean condition 997 vehicle as you know some of you guys that we are specialty shop for Porsche 997 turbos GT2s GT3s we do these a lot and what I wanted to go over here is how clean this car is it's got 32,000 miles it's in very good shape as far as we can look on the interior side mechanical wise is a different story so when you first look at this vehicle it will really grab your attention how clean the vehicle is and you'll think man this thing must be really well maintained well that's not the case let's go in the back and start diagnosing what kind of issues this customer actually has he just recently bought this vehicle and there's a lot of things going on with it we got Lowe's hose clamps this hose clamp was completely broken um, we had to get another hose clamp for now until we could order one in order to prevent boost leaks the belt is all original the engine mounts are sagging and there's a lot of turbo oil from a turbo being pushed into the intake and also whoever had the engine out told the customer that the cooling fittings which is the common one on this side that fails there's actually seven of them that we end up pinning when we remove the engine but this dealer whoever sold it to him said hey issue is fixed uh, he made the customer really feel like the hoses and everything was done when we inspected it with that camera we noted that it wasn't done might have replaced some hose but as far as any hose even underneath it's original so what i want to say is when you're looking for a 997 unless you're buying one from a specialty shop but i occasionally sell my own vehicles and they have very good records on them and i have all the receipts to prove it i wouldn't trust car lots because they'll tell you anything just to sell you the vehicle and that's unfortunate but that's the world we live in so this gentleman has a lot of things going on with it. a big problem it has is uh his axles busted in the front left he's gonna need to drop the engine again and replace all the coolant fittings that typically are known to go bad this engine was already out once before by the actual dealer that sold it to him but he never did the work properly you know they just patched it up there's a very vague invoice statement unfortunately you're going to end up getting back into the engine and doing it right because if you don't the coolant fittings will pop we have video of the actual coolant fittings let me see if we can get in there and so i can show you okay so here's a coolant fitting that's from our other 997 that we're working on but this is what it looks like so as you can see these aluminum fittings they have the retaining compound that holds them in place epoxy and uh, they'll, they'll push out this is so th this is all new retaining compound that we installed but what's going to happen is the this now becomes a single piece because i have this bolt here and here and then here and this is the most common one that fails in the gt3 and uh, turbo cars it sits this way so where i was pointing in the engine this is how it sits and the uh, pipe that we always see that pulls it sorry it's just like this the pipe that we actually see that pushes out the most is this one right here this one will always push out the big the large one not the small one but it'll start to push out and you'll start to notice a little gap because the hose goes right against it and when that occurs this will eventually just pop right out and you'll have a catastrophic coolant failure and that's what happens these fittings it's three on this particular housing and there's uh four more that need to be addressed a lot of the new ones that get purchased they never get done and the problem is nobody wants to spend the money to do them properly you know you'll get these ridiculous quotes that somebody's had something done where we only see like one of these replaced like one of these literally will get replaced and they don't get pinned they just put a factory unit in there that's glued from the factory the same way and eventually the same thing will happen it'll just pop out once again so you want to pin these this is a way that we do it we don't weld them there's other shops that weld them we've had uh over time with welds the reason why we don't weld them we've had quite a few come in that were welded is the weld will hold but because this metal is so porous it'll start to leak where not where the weld is but somewhere next to the well because the metal gets heated and eventually the little voids inside because these are sand cast they'll have little voids that develop into pinholes and they'll leak so that's why we don't weld them that doesn't mean if you weld them they, they'll leak problem is it's the actual cast 
metal that you have to worry about. So this right here is a permanent fix. I've never had to repair one after 20 years, ever. Here's a 997 that I'm getting ready to put for sale. This one is at 650 horsepower. It's got about $65,000 worth of work done. I have all receipts, records. And when I sell these cars, and they're immaculate. You don't have to do anything. You buy it, you drive it, you enjoy it, and you won't have any issues. So you may get a good deal. You may get a nice price and you're like, man, I really got this good deal, but it's not a good deal when you have to put $20,000 into the vehicle or 10, 15, as soon as you drive it off the lot. This 997 Turbo that I have here has had every single thing done. I mean, I have m and race exhaust on this car. It has uh, Evo intercoolers, custom Brixton wheels, which are forged. The Ram system has been fully rebuilt. It doesn't leak. It's a fully upgraded kit on here which is known to fail. It's got a valved exhaust. I mean, tons and tons of work. All the cooling fittings have been done. Every hose on this engine, turbos have been upgraded to a 68 millimeter. So every single thing has been upgraded and that's the kind of vehicle you wanna buy. And it has not been abused. I originally bought this from a customer of mine. He's an older gentleman, 78 years old. So he just wanted 650 crank horsepower without having to have any more because he didn't wanna you know, dog this car. It was just, just in case he needed it. So I ended up purchasing this vehicle from him after he decided to get rid of it because he needed to um, get something else, four door, because he was getting older and it was hard for him to get it in and out of. I do have a lot of love for this car. I really don't need to sell it, but I'm trying to get something else. So I'm probably gonna end up selling it. This is a tip Tiptronic Mercedes transmission. So let's see if we can get in here. It's a very beautiful, piano black interior trim and it's a 2009 so it has all the uh, cool features which is carbon fiber lit turbo seals carbon fiber everywhere it has the black center console here it has a gt2 race seats which was an option with the black piano backs so it's well well equipped even this is black piano right here all cool porsche crests Porsche crest on the armrest, so it's a super deal what I'm asking for it. And I'll sell it without the wheels or the exhaust. Wheels along with tires uh, cost uh, 14900 14, It's got 4S tires, but I do have the stock wheels. When you're buying a car, you want to buy everything already done because if you end up buying something that's trashed, then you'll end up fixing it. These are the examples that I'm talking about. It's interesting. When we do see customers looking for a car, like we have this one for sale by uh, one of our customers, you can sign it with us. And people will just call and all they care is about price. And it's what something costs, but you don't even have any value in what's been put into it. So you don't have to fix it. You don't have to deal with the headaches. Sometimes price only is a small factor of, because you end up looking at the repair and service bill and you see the customer spent 20 grand on the vehicle or or 15 grand within the past three years and you're getting a smoking deal and it's slightly over book value well now you don't have to fix anything well you can find one that's two thousand dollars cheaper or four thousand you're gonna be putting 10 grand into it. it just doesn't make sense i would rather spend a little bit more like let's say i'm buying a turbo i'd rather spend 10 or eight thousand more and get a car that has 65 grand worth of work done then to buy one like the one I just showed you outside and spend 20 to do the things. Fix the turbos because there's a, there's an oil uh, buildup in the left turbo that's spewing oil. So pick your battles. Don't be focused too much on the price because the price, cheaper is not better ever. It's never. There's a reason why it's cheaper. There's a reason why somebody has it priced well because they either can't afford to fix it, which is a lot of times the case, or they're ready to move on to something else and they don't care if they sell it or not. So keep that in mind when you guys are looking for turbos. Get one that's already been done. Don't trust anybody that tells you all oh, the cooling fittings were done by the dealer or somebody, unless there's re records, proof, pictures, it didn't happen. So hope you guys uh, have a little bit more insight now and looking for 997s or any Porsches actually, and you end up not getting uh, hosed like one of our customers with one of the turbos, which I feel bad for him because now he's got to spend a lot of money to get it fixed. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.